greetings. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, it's interesting that uh, <coughs> you spent a couple of moments looking at the screen there thinking well, nothing's happening and realising it's actually recorded so it was waiting for me to sit down and begin. Glory to God and welcome to this uh, short series on devotionals uh, for the Feast of Booths. I, I can share in testimony that uh, God has blessed me with understanding and insight and wisdom and, and fellowship, communion with His Holy Spirit in the pursuance of observate, observing the days that He ordained, the days that are written in the Bible. During a recent uh, uh, service sermon that I was giving uh, as part of a children's activity, I, I put up pictures of the uh, feasts that are celebrated in most Western civilized countries. So we're talking in, in Europe, in America, and, uh, here in New Zealand, and Australia. And as I think of it, probably throughout most most of the world, because I know in, in, in India and <coughs> Arab, even you know Arab countries, when I was in Saudi Arabia, festivals such as Christmas, Easter, Diwali, Halloween, were all noted. I put photographs. On pictures that people could readily, children could readily identify. And that's the world that we live in today. They can see the festival of lights, they can see the bright colours of holy. They can know that Santa Claus or a festooned dead tree represents Christmas or, or, or eggs brightly coloured or a rabbit can represent Easter. In certain cultural situations, there'd also be local holidays here in New Zealand. Matariki is the uh, 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 Maori celebration of a story and tale of the uh, uh, seven sisters of one of the founding members of the line that occupy New Zealand. And, uh, as a relatively new convert to Christianity, I find it strange that, as a relative, as, as a Christian, I shouldn't look to the Bible for what festivals that God lays down. And then, when I find it, I'd only find that, that God laid down ordinances for festivals and feast days. But Jesus followed them according to his custom. He, he travelled across the country to to go up and celebrate them, take part in. Them. Now clear in my understanding of Christianity that according to Colossians 2, I think it is, that we shouldn't judge people according to their keeping of feast days, new moons and Sabbaths. What I found myself in position in response to I pray to the Holy Spirit and being guided by the Holy Spirit is that the observations haven't gone. Why shouldn't we observe? the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of, uh, of uh, Weeks, Pentecost. Why don't we celebrate these times? Even as Christians, you know, the day of the Ascension Day seems to have passed into antiquity. And certainly for our children, how are we preparing them? How we look and open the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur? canon of, 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 of the Bible that most people read and observe and believe in. The book of Maccabees is, is an apocryphal, or even completely in this confused Bible, but will not be included. Jerusalem in AD 79 because they 
set up an abomination so similar to Antiochus Epiphanes, abomination in the uh, temple, that, that the Christians in Jerusalem in AD 75 took that as a warning that Jesus had made and fled to the hills. And not a single Christian was killed because of Jesus' prophecy. Even though that, that, you know, thousands of, of Jewish people were slaughtered as the temple was destroyed and set on fire and sacked. How much have we lost in 2,000 years? And what is there to be gained, more importantly? So, I encourage you at this time of feasting to first of all recognise that we don't know the way. We can, we can go online and look up the different things and I, and I recommend that, that you do if you haven't done already. You know, the, 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 the positioning of your booth and the making of a booth and what it's there for, what it signifies. I'll be uh, taking my meals, I'm recording these a day ahead in storeroom that is the church here in Peter. There's an, uh, an, an attempt to go deeper, to understand more, to commune further. As I, I, I've spoken before, I want my relationship with the Lord our God to be in its fullest, not to that I be <laughs> vaunted or lifted up. Who wouldn't? God has done all this for me. I, I want to be in the fullness of relationship that it can be now. Wretch that I am. And, I, and, I, and I've described it like tuning a radio. For those of you who can remember or know. And you want to get the, I want to get the best signal. The clearest signal. I know that the, the, the keeping of the Saturday Sabbath, for instance, was one where it was like, wow, that's like, that, that was like a, an order of magnitude better than the, my walk was previously. And that's what I'm going to press into. If the Spirit moves in me and, and, and stirs and, and shows and, and reveals His truth in Scripture and Word and expression and walk and way and day, that's what I want to be. That's where I want to go. I'm changed. I need to find that place. I know that my home is not in this world. But I want a bit of closer connection as I can to the one that I'm going to. And these are the things that I can only testify to you with all that I am. As much as it is that these are the right things to be doing. So for the feast day, celebrate! I mean, I've got a bottle of wine. I might have a glass actually. I've got to go. You don't know. Wine and food and celebration and joy and singing and thanksgiving and praise. I think there are, strangely, uh, days where we should be mindful. The approach to the Day of Atonement, for instance, the month, should be a day of reflection. It should be a time of reflecting over the Lord, a time of reflecting over our sin. In Judaism, the Day of Atonement is a day of fasting and, and, and mourning. And, and, quiet reverence. But I think for Christians it should be the greatest celebration day that we have in our calendar. Not only has Christ come as we celebrate Christmas, Christ fulfills all of the law that we may be forgiven of sin and enter into the most holy place. Wow! He did that! He fulfilled that day! And when he comes again, he's going to fulfill that day in its utterest completion. The redemption of mankind to himself. The calling of his children to himself. And the putting away of those that harden their hearts. And a life, a new heaven and a new earth and a new way of forever in the presence of our Lord God and Saviour. So for me, a day of atonement should be a, you know, wow, celebrate. Because that when Jesus comes again, just as Jesus in the in the uh, uh, Passover story and, and, and the Passover holiday celebration is fulfilled in the coming of Christ and in the time of Easter, unleavened bread, festival of cake, harvest, all of them, uh, so so much so that when Jesus comes again, he will fulfill this second part. The atonement, the feast of trumpets, the trumpet blast, and then the arrival of the king to once and for all make the judgment in the fullness of his glory and separate and call his people to himself and take them home.
exciting. A toning. He's paid the price. The, the, the universe has changed for his sacrifice. And it's not an ongoing thing. There are churches or cults, if you want to call them that, that, that believe that there's like a, there's an ongoing thing. But Christ died once and for all. This is written in Hebrew. As Jesus himself said, it is finished. So what now? This is what Paul would ask. What now? What do we do now? Where do we go? What do we do? How do we behave? What does scripture say? And that's going to be the theme. How could it not be? This time of the Feast of Booze, of taking meals apart, is a reminder of the days in the wilderness, the days of the Exodus. A camping trip like no other. Forty years in the pre with the, the people of God in the presence of God. God was with them in the tabernacle uh, as a pill pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by the day. There, he fed them. Their clothes didn't wear out. He provided for them supernaturally. Partridges and, and, and man, water from the rock. And he built them and moved them in, in such a way to organize them and to strengthen them. And my encouragement to you, I mean, I've done this in my third year now. I actually live in a tent, so it's even more of a, a relevance and a reality to me. But to Your blessing upon this meal, you bless the bread and the fish before feeding the 5,000. You bless the bread of communion as you broke it, Lord. And uh, in my communion with people, sharing during this time, I break the bread and bless it in your name. We see a clearer picture, an experience, a truer understanding. You're, you say you're going to write your word upon our hearts, Lord, and I honestly believe that's what you're doing. So I pray that blessing over this family as we search and open your word in Jesus' name. And then I'm conscious, too, that the bread was broken at the beginning of the meal. The wine was drunk at the end. Not that we're going to sit through my entire meal. So, first Chronicles chapter 11, I'm going to read from. Uh, verse 15. One day, three of the thirty leading soldiers went to a rock where David was staying near the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was on a fortified hill, and a group of Philistines had occupied Bethlehem. David got homesick, that's the town, of course, that he was from, and said, now I wish someone would bring me a drink of water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. The three famous soldiers forced their way through the Philistine camp, drew some water from the well and brought it back to David, but he would not drink it. Instead, he poured out as an offering to the Lord and said, I could never drink this. It would be like drinking the blood of these men who risked their lives. So he refused to drink it. These soldiers, these were the brave deeds of the three famous soldiers goes on to list the famous 30. There was more than that. 
men of prowess, men of uh, deed. And we know that David was a, a called to be a warrior king, although he did fulfil priestly duties as well. You know, we know he sang and he wrote the Psalms. And we know of his good deeds and his bad deeds. The Bible says that David was a, a man after God's own heart. Here, he must have regretted a fairly casual thing, one of those things where, we, you know, almost like again in, in, in the Exodus time, fairly early on, the, the people started to grumble. God doesn't like grumbling, and, and, and they grumbled after the food that they'd had in Egypt. And the, the line that always catches me is they grumbled after cucumbers. Well, the cucumbers in Egypt, they were so nice. And Moses rounds on them and he's like, you were slaves. And now you're free and, and you're grumbling after the cucumbers of that place. And here we have a, a similar thing, you know. He, as king in a camp that is set up, he's going to have access to water. But it's probably, it might be skins that are warm and might be a bit earthy. And, and you know, it might have been carried several days old and carried from place to place. So it'll have, you know, a bit of flavour to it. Maybe the well outside the gate of Bethlehem had a you know, particular place in the shade that, uh, upon a hillside. It might be spring-fed, it might be cool and refreshing. And that's, that's that. He's got that, that thing in his mind, oh, hot days, campaigning, and prospect of war, clash. You can't imagine the clash of men and steel and bone and blood and flesh being ripped and torn apart. drink of that cold water and then before he can say anything off these three guys go and he might not have known that they'd gone uh, an hour two hours later they come back panting and sweating swords maybe bloody you know, you know, how many people detail it says they pressed through the camp detail how many people they killed to get there and then they come back. Ha 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 as it is a drink offering to the Lord. I mean, pours it from the ground. Some people might think, oh, look, those three guys went through a lot to give you the water, and that's not very grateful of you. Well, this is the message for today. Those three men had to go through that trial. They had to press in through that through that thing in order to get the true understanding of what the value of those that they were and that their king had for them. And that's what I want you to receive. Going through with this strangeness and putting the time aside to you know do something which makes it's not quite normal. I pray that you be encouraged and I pray that you come to understand that, that value. Yeah, those soldiers wouldn't have turned away. Oh, I'm just, you know, just not doing that again for him. They were like, oh, you know, he doesn't want us to risk our lives on small things. He values us, he loves us. That's a king I want to serve. That's a king I want to know, and that's how Jesus wants with us. He values and wants us to press in, to be brave. And step outside the boat, as we know, through with Peter, outside of our comfort zones, that we may receive more, not that we may be put to trial and test and temptation, but that we may receive that deeper thing. We won't be tempted beyond what we are able to bear. First Corinthians 10, 13, and God will always give us a way out so we, we can press in and encourage us to do more and go deeper. So as we eat today, I'm, 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 lunch of crackers and tuna and cheese and pickles, good camp rations, soup, bowl of soup, 
that's blessed with a um, cost, custard slice, I'll make custard slice, praise God, and um, I'm have a slurple of wine at the end and finish off that benediction for communion. Be encouraged. Our God is with us. And that's the sense I want you to receive in the Feast of Booze, being enclosed in a place where God is in the room with you. I'll see you tomorrow. And as advertised, a closing benediction in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us beyond measure in everything that you've done. to you, Lord, in the sending of your Son, Jesus Christ. Everything speaks of your majesty. Psalm 19, verse 1, says, The heavens declare the majesty of our King, and the firmament shows his handy work, Lord. As we travel and go with you, we see you more and more. And as we end this first uh, fellowship, Devotion, the Feast of Booze, Lord, we uh, lift a song of praise to you, your glory and splendor, your faithfulness, uh, your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness stretches to the sky. So I pray a blessing upon this uh, wine cup, Lord, and upon uh, the truth that Jesus is Lord, uh, that we may commune with you. We broke bread, we partake in the grain offering and internalize it into our temple. It is our body, Lord, and the wine too. So one brings the grain offering, the other brings the blood offering to sanctify and cleanse and clean, Lord. We, Lord, and may all things we do, we do it in honour for you, Lord, and you may also speak and uh, guide us away, as well as to the saints. We pray, Lord, as you keep us on that narrow path your rod and your staff are a comfort to us. And uh, pray a blessing on the people that are partaking, a blessing upon the cup that you have shared. And I give thanks for, it, for who you are, what you are doing, what you have done, and what you will do. In Jesus' name. New life! Praise and glory, hallelujah. Please uh, uh, pick up a few songs on the... Uh, on your internet, on your Wi-Fi, do these songs of celebration, songs that raise a joyful noise for the Lord. This is a feast day, a celebration, the God of all creation has stirred himself to bring his people from captivity. Glory, hallelujah, glory, amen. He has taken them and set them aside that he may commune with them and teach them by the way they should go. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, amen. See you tomorrow. Praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime. Come on, Sparrow, sing along. Praise him, praise him, praise him when, oh no, sun goes down.